Hi, this is Barry Sterling Mitchell. Uh, this is Ben and Barry on football. My name is Barry Sterling Mitchell. Um, <laughs> the editing will have to kick in right about here, won't it? Uh, <laughs> Barry Sterling Mitchell. I do the Sterling Net Point Power Rankings. My name is Ben Dickerson. I'm his buddy, and uh, I just like football. I just asked him if he was ready. And what do you say? <laughs> no. <laughs> Who spoke first? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, we have a crazy show set up for you today. All right, we got some things, and um, we're going to do it a little bit different uh, than normal. We're actually going to go straight to uh, social media because we've got some topics. This is the off season, so if you're watching regular television, what you're going to see is a lot of guessing games, people with their mock drafts, and all of that. You know what I heard? God was saying that pretty much all mock drafts are going to be wrong because as soon as the draft starts, people are going to start trading things. So everything is going to go out the window. Right. But they have to have something to talk about. I think Mel Kuyper is on uh, his mock draft 5.0. They so got to have something to talk about. It's like every but two to three weeks, they put out a new one. That's because there's no games. But oh, yeah, they need filler. there's no football games, but there are other games being played mm. at whole other levels in football. And that's what we're going to talk about uh, because that's what happens in the off season. Okay. Now you're dealing with owners games and coaching games and all the draft and free agency games, contract games, money games. This is the money time. You know what I mean? So, yeah, it's all fun and games from week, you know, from the beginning of the season. And guess what we're going to talk about? The schedule is out. Okay. The new phone book is there. Remember that? That remember changes too. The new phone book is here. You jerk, remember that? Oh. <laughs> we keep bringing up phone <laughs> company stuff. <laughs> I know, I know. Two phone company guys. Man. All right, stay away from that. Okay, so uh, let's get ready to... Uh, take a look at some of that information that we're talking about. Uh, we're going to start right here at our Facebook page and um, remind you that, you know, we've been putting out some information. Last week's show, we, we have a special segment that we that we pulled out of last week's show on the Players Coalition. Right. And that was that was kind of a serious, you know, a serious topic. Um, because, again, we talked about Kaepernick. We talked about the Players Coalition, the conflict that they had. But the, the, the goal, the goal of the, the, goal of the um, is the same. The goal is the same for the both of them. You know? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if, if they could come together, it'd be great. Take a look at that show uh, at Ben and Barry on football on Facebook at DMBO West. And you'll be able to see, you know, what we're talking about in terms of the, how they're using that 88 million, what the Players Coalition is doing Absolutely. out in the community. You know, it, it, it's an awesome thing. It's an awesome thing. Now, Ben, let's talk for a minute about the AAF. <laughs> you know, I, I'm actually kind of sad. I'm so disappointed. I'm so disappointed. I'll let you go ahead. I, I really, I'll tell you what, I wasn't really into it like I planned to be. And that's my fault because, as I mentioned from time to time, I am a fantasy geek. And when it's football season, I'm all in fantasy football. But my love for the game, how I watch the game, and how it relates to my playing fantasy, and then I'm coaching the flag football, I'm all in. But when football season's over, I branch out to fantasy basketball and hockey. So to bring another league in on me, it was kind of tough. Like, it was a little crazy. However, mm -hmm. my big thing with the AAF was the games that I watched, I noticed there were some talented players out there. And I'm thinking to myself, hey, 32 teams in the NFL, 53-man rosters, there's talent out there, enough talent to bring in another professional league. We scoff at these other professional leagues sometimes because there's been the the the, uh, the USFL and the XFL, and they've all failed for one reason or another. 
but this one seemed to be so well thought out and seemed to have so many names that we knew and respected and other football that's people what i'm knew talking about okay. i'm thinking to myself this is the one that's going to stick and this is going to give some opportunities to some guys almost like a minor league opportunities is 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 a point i want to talk about right. more but i want to just mention mm -hmm. okay real, one thing real quick as a person who I made an attempt to watch games, right? Mm -hmm. And again, started even connecting with some of these names you're talking about. Mm -hmm. We're coming up on game eight of a 10 game season. Right. We two games from the championship. Right. We've got the number one team, the Orlando Apollo with Steve Spurrier. Coached by the old ball coach. <laughs> going up against Mike Singletary. Mr. Defense. <laughs> right, with the with the it's Express, the yeah. right, who just brought on Johnny Manziel. <laughs> All things. Right. And so you're thinking, to stop the we got storylines here. We got real storylines. This, stop this the could league. be like a real oh, league. Oh, man, come on. We were just starting to get to know these guys. It's crazy. Right? It's a shame. Just getting to start to know these guys and starting to kind of see, and, you know, you're like, wait a minute. He got some serious coaching squads here and some – the, the, oh, the man, really no, sad man. part is, though, it seems to be mostly financial, and I thought they were smart enough to have that part tucked away. I'm gonna actually, um, I'm gonna actually look at uh, more in depth in terms of what the AAF uh, is doing. But um, I was I, my main point was simply that I was just looking. I was looking forward. To the game. Mm -hmm. Now I'm looking to see because I want to see, you know, I mean, the Orlando Apollo, Steve Spurrier was throwing it down on these young guys. You know what I mean? He's showing everybody, you know, how he to this thing. He kind of surprised me a bit <laughs> because there were some other coaches out there who were younger and were kind of, I don't want to say fresh off of maybe being assistants on NFL teams or whatever but not as far removed from the NFL as him. And he's schooling him, boys. He was schooling. Offensively, he was schooling him. <laughs> he so, was, so, you know, you say AAF, there was a level of professionalism involved or professionals involved mm -hmm. that when you really start to look around, we did that early in the league. We mm -hmm. went through who all the coaches were. Yep. You can go back. Yep. Ben and Barry on football early shows. We went through every coach. Yeah. Um, some of the right executives, now, some of the league executives, people like Polian, Ebersol, names like that, names that were connected to networks, names that were connected to the NFL, popular people, people in the know. I'm I'm surprised. I'm just I'm surprised. Right now, um, there are lawsuits oh, because geez. it shut down so, so abruptly. abruptly that people were screwed, people were owed money, people were left in rooms with hotel bills. And kicked out. They were kicked out, paychecks abruptly stopped. And I'm, and you have to think to yourself, wait a second. You signed three year, quarter million dollar deals across the league with all of these players. Now, you know, I, in my other life, I provide a market and legal service plan. Because I'm wondering, did anybody have anybody take a look at that contract <laughs> that they could just walk away like that and leave you that high and dry? That ain't a contract. I don't know what you call that. I can't believe that many guys could sign that similar contract and nobody had an agent, <laughs> uh, Uncle, Uncle Louie something that went, hey, wait a minute. You know, yeah. <laughs> GarySterlingMitchell.com. You can find out how to get take, you know, get a plan to take care of it. But yeah, I mean, you know, and a lot of these guys have been had previous NFL experience, so they dealt with contracts. Yeah. You know, they have some should have some contract expertise, you know, there, but or be in know. touch with someone who does. But then again, by the same token, Bill Polian said, We're all out of a job right now. And he they he was quoted on here as saying, you know, I'm doing what I can to help people. He said the system kind of broke down on people. Mm. And so we're working without pay.
to try to rectify some of those situations. So there's some I mean, things that's going a good thing. on, some drama. There's even this hint that I'm hearing about potential future plans. So it might have shut down this year, but that don't necessarily mean that they're not oh, going to try yeah, to, sure. to, to continue to develop this. But a lot has to do with this situation with the Players Association now, the union, and, and them. And this whole thing we talked about where they said they needed to have access to uh, players who basically have contracts, even if they're on the practice squad. And that's, you know, we don't see that happening. That's not how they kicked it off. And as a developmental <coughs> league, me. you know, um, yeah. if they've made it into the NFL at any level, they've developed further than what, you know, that's, that's beyond your league right there. So you need to be getting people to that level where they're getting at least into the practice squads. I agree with you 100%. And I disagree if they think that to sustain this league, they're going to need guys that have already made it in the NFL, no matter at what level, practice squad, whatever, okay? There's plenty of talent out there. Some of it may just need to be developed. We have a list. We do it in every other sport, and I don't want to get into this other crazy stuff, but we do it in every other sport. Why not the NFL? You don't have to say this is the NFL developmental league. You don't have to say that. Mm. I, there's guys that have made their careers in arena football. They've had entire arena football careers. Yeah, if you can go three to five years, you know, especially in the league, if the league has If the league extends itself and has longevity, you can make more money. The league becomes more popular, da 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 da, da. So, again. That, that was my question. What, is the, what was the AAS plan? I mean, did they not sell enough tickets to cover their costs? Did they not have Yeah, where was the breakdown? Behind, there was no insurance program behind those contracts, for example, that if, the, if something folded. I would think they would be smarter than that. You know what I mean? But did if they not have the, did you, were you that seriously undercapitalized that you were literally going into knowing that you were week to week going into the league and you yeah. sold these people those contracts? I would hate to think that they, they really were leaning on uh, – uh, fan participation and selling tickets as a large part of this. They had television contracts. They were right. on two major stations. Right. You know what I mean? But the gate means something, too. Well, you're in cities. And that's why they went to cities that didn't always – a lot of them didn't already have NFL teams, thinking that we can build a fan base here. I, I like the idea, but – yeah, maybe the insurance thing. Uh... This this article here, Ben, is is coming off of the AAF because we're talking about developmental leagues, okay? Mm -hmm. And we're also talking about leagues that, you know, are now developing throughout the United States. This is starting to look like the European invasion of basketball, you know, where the more Malakovic's that you could get, you knew that they were going to play a certain – style of, of, of disciplined ball. They were right. well-skilled, you know, right. and, and, and that European model, well, you know, in, in the NFL. They were able to play professional ball at a younger age. Right, right. Again, Tony Parker, you know, playing at 15, for example, right. on a professional level. So now we've – the I didn't know that the NFL had an international player pathway program. Okay, it's cool. You didn't know that either, did I you? I had no idea. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, as, you know, again, off season, we start looking at football. You know, we're getting our Jones on. I'm looking at the CFL, the AAF, mm -hmm. you know. And then I find out, and you can find some of these people on our Twitter page, mm -hmm. that they are now an international movement of American football. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's not like they're playing rugby, soccer, or something mm -hmm. else. This is a replica of the model of the NFL. And that's all well and good, but tell me about the NFL pathway. Explain to me how this works. So they actually have an allotment of people that can come in to this, through this program, okay, and not count against some of their numbers and stuff. Like oh, that. okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
I knew it benefited the end of the some go to, our, go to our page, you can read it in depth. But yeah, yeah. Yes. And so number one, they've already announced, and we have it listed on our Facebook page, mm -hmm. a number of players are signing on from the AAF. Oh yeah, no, About I've twelve I've seen different that. teams now have picked I've up seen teams from the up AAF. These guys. Yeah, sure, sure. Now also you have international players. The CFL mm -hmm. held their first international combine in Mexico. Great. Like about a month ago. Great. So they're pulling in. Even the CFL is reaching out, looking internationally now for right. players. Okay. Um, Maya Lilata, I probably said his name wrong, for the Eagles. The Eagles Remember him? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The rugby guy mm -hmm. didn't qualify for that program because he came over in the draft. They actually drafted him. Yes. So he didn't qualify for the international program. I got you. But that's the outreach now. They're looking, you know, for talent on an international level. Now, you know, that's probably going to help keep salaries down, too. <laughs> you know, <laughs> they can find the French Brett Favre, the real Favre. <laughs> you can only keep the salaries down for so long. I know. They're going to be competing on an international level. It's like, yeah. uh, who can't imagine? That's but pretty interesting. It is interesting that they actually have a program to develop um, – and then flux of, of that's pretty players. cool. Man, that's pretty cool. cool. Yeah, yeah. I would think though that these international guys, seeing as how these leagues are developing in these different countries, without any real NFL backing, that's cool to me because they just love American football. Yeah, you, you know got, what I mean. You got this kid they here. They just love American football. Jacob Johnson, Germany. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So the the main thing is that they're not trying to do something different. They're trying to do it. So these guys are playing the game as right. it's played in the right. NFL. Right. So they're not learning even CFL rules. Right. You know, which right. is a little bit different. But so. but if the NFL is peeping them, then they're saying, hey, you know what? We think you're good enough or maybe good enough to play at the highest level that this game is played at, which is over here in the NFL. And we're willing to make a way for you to possibly fulfill that dream. I think that's cool. And I'm sure they're going to make some kind of effort to make it a little lighter on teams. Maybe they'll increase roster sizes or something early on or change cut down days or something like that to give these guys a chance to actually make it or not make it. Because that's going to be more – I mean, they're not going to – the, the draft isn't going to be any less. So you'll still have your full thing of draft picks and all that. And then these guys are kind of add-ons. There's not going to be a ton of them, I'm sure, but they'll have to do something to allow the teams to try to fit them in to keep them long enough to see if they can make it or not. And if they do that, then I think that's wonderful. I mean, you still got the basic 53-man roster. That, yeah, that's always farmers. going to come down to that, as you know, far as I know. I don't. This think is that's the article um, that has a list of a lot of the guys who got signed from the AAF. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I saw their names popping up on the ticker on the bottom of the screen almost the day after <clears throat> things got shut down. So, football perspective uh, had something on Twitter and. Uh, I picked up on it because, again, right now in that draft conversation, Josh Rosen is a big part because the Cardinals have the first pick and the Cardinals coach has professed his love. I know, but he has, you know, that's the setup. Oh, right? yeah, that's yeah, the story. That's the setup. Right Absolutely. Or um, he made me forget his name there. Kyler Murray. Okay. So then there's the question of, okay. We did all we did to get Josh Rosen, right? And how good did he look? You know, do we think he is the franchise that in such a way that we would bypass taking a quarterback with the first pick in the draft and then go get something else as opposed to a quarterback because you, Josh Rosen, are the man. And then you look and say, okay, but what was your record? What was, you know, how did you look? And so he simply uh, statistically shared information that shows that, you know, again, it's the irony is that the better you are in college, mm -hmm. 
the worse the team is that you're probably going to. Right. In a game where, uh, in a game that is the ultimate team game. Right. <laughs> so now. So no matter how good you are, <laughs> if the team is really terrible, you're only going to be able to do so much. But your greatness usually will shine through, like with, oh, you know, yeah, that's yeah, the thing. Yeah. But the question is then, you know, when you look at a lot of these guys, the greatness didn't necessarily. Goff is probably the, the, the most current real example of that. Yeah, but that he shined through in his second year. That's what I'm saying. But the Rose first year. gotten the second year yet. Right, but I'm just saying, the, the first year, you didn't know what the heck you would want to get. But the Rams didn't go and look for another quarterback. And they got new coaching. Ah. <laughs> the Jets. They got new coaching. The Jets. Cardinals got new coaching. The Jets didn't go out looking for a new quarterback. The Browns didn't go out looking for a new quarterback. These are all first. These guys all came in the draft with Good point. Good point. Good point. You know, they didn't have great year. Well, the Browns definitely overachieved. But the Jets weren't good at all. The, and, and you know me. The I, Buffalo I, Bills didn't I didn't run think out. that they overachieved. I, I thought they might have been a little better. I thought they had a little more talent and, and they, you know. But, again, you had that change in coaching, you, you know. Yeah, one, yeah. All of that, that things, had something to do with it. And they had the interim change. coach and yeah, all that other yeah. stuff hanging over so, their heads. You know, coach is a big aspect. But, but they didn't fall on their faces. You know, so, I, I can't kind of count them. But the Buffalo Bills – sucked and they're not running out looking for a new quarterback all those quarterbacks of all those teams came in with rosen so if they trade him and take kyler murray it is solely because their staff got together and put their heads together and said we really 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 want kyler murray You're the Cardinals GM right now. Mm -hmm. You're looking at that at that team. Mm -hmm. You have that option. Which way mm -hmm. you go? I take Kyler Murray. You take Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray helps me get better faster than Josh Rosen does. That's my opinion. Why? Why do you say that? Because he can move. They're not going to change their offensive line overnight. That offensive line sucked last year. It's going to suck again. <laughs> Might not suck quite as bad, but it's going to suck. <laughs> okay. Anytime you got a running back like David Johnson and you can't get him free, you got problems. You got way more problems than a quarterback. Now. Well, that's what that's what that whole chart is about. Right. The fact that as a team, you know, all of those, you know, as a quarterback, you're right. not, you can't overcome right. all of those so bills. we rather yeah. suck with the new shiny new toy then suck with the same old guy we sucked with last year. That's the way I look at it. That's when you <laughs> yeah. rather suck with the shiny new toy. Oh, yeah. Pause with that conversation. Right? Then people are going to stop coming. You need butts in the seats. <laughs> pause that, too. Yeah, pause that also. Suck with the shiny new toy. <laughs> I just realized what I said. <laughs> man, it's football, man. <laughs> Back to the page. Here we go. Russell Wilson, then I'm looking at this potentially a tipping point in terms of how things are being negotiated. The word that we, you know, we've talked about in the past, right, was guarantee. The amount of money that's been guaranteed over the last year or so in terms of contracts, I, I, I don't know. You tell me. Is it historic highs? It it has to be historic highs because this is not brand new, but it's pretty new. Guaranteed guaranteed money in contracts in in football was almost like a dirty word. Guarantee. You want us to do what? Guarantee. There's still old guard that aren't big on gas stealers. That's absolutely right? not. They, and they, so that whole thing. They think out. this guarantee thing is foolish. How long has the NFL been around? Look, we've had 53 Super Bowls. It's how long? It's a hundredth anniversary, man. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. Okay. So just take them hundred years. And when did anybody get a guarantee anything in the NFL of new? <laughs> guarantee to get cut. The last two <laughs> years, maybe. Well, that's what I'm saying. Exactly. So, 
So, that so all of this is fresh new territory. These owners are going, what even, happened? Even to the Cowboys, they just signed at the end. Right? Marcus. Marcus. Yes. We gave him a big guarantee, you know? So they're still they on that They can't get out from under it now. They can't get – once it's done, once the, once the glass is broken, now these other teams, the, the, the players have leverage now. They gave away some of their leverage to the players now. They gave – okay, so they gave – so now you have Russell Wilson. Now, for what I understand, you're talking about leverage. Russell Wilson, for what I understand, is giving them deadlines now. Why wouldn't he? This Why is an interesting he? article. I got to give it to the young man who put this together uh, because he really got into the weeds and kind of talked a lot about all the different contract options. Mm -hmm. This is where he says he gave the Seahawks that April 15 deadline. You know, and guess who they were able to favorably compare him to? Skill wise, contract wise, contract wise, play, playing wise, yeah, skill wise. Let's say, boom. okay, contract and skill wise. Well, no, skill wise, accomplishment wise, that's more like it. Okay, a current, a current player, or a player. Let's see. I'm leaning towards saying Tom Brady. Almost. 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 Uh, they won a Super Bowl recently? Uh-uh. Okay. This is part of the problem. It's got a new coach. Got it. Who? Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. So when you start comparing him to Aaron Rodgers, and then you look That was my down, second guess. <laughs> and then you look down and you say, look at a 100% 100, 100 guarantee that went to a Kirk Cousins. And they're comparing you now to Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, they're cussing cousins out right in now. A, in a time when players are uh, exerting their leverage, <laughs> walking away, even though Thanks Marcus to A.B. Said, and Le'Veon. He said, he said, I ain't following the Le'Veon model. No, I'm not walking no. away from $20 million. I'm, no. gonna sit, I'm not going to sit down with $20 million. Right. He was like, nah, that ain't smart happening. man. But you see what I'm saying? So, and then look who's following Wilson. Dak, mm -hmm. yeah, but Dak, Dak ain't gonna lose his mind. Dak ain't gonna lose his mind. <laughs> Dak realizes in order for him to continue to have a, a somewhat successful career, that money's got to be divvied out to Zeke and Amari too. He understands where he's at, and I heard the triplets mentioned, like Aikman, Irvin, and oh yeah, three right. So now school. this is the new Cowboys triplets, and his success hinges on them two guys. All of their success hinges on it, which is why everyone's even looking at Aaron Rodgers kind of cross-eyed because he didn't follow the Tom Brady model. Apparently, Tom Brady has allowed all types of flexibilities and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? There, there's Taking a, there's less a game. money. We talked about this deferred a game, money. A game being played today. That's, this is what exactly we talked about at the beginning of the show. Go ahead. Tom Brady's done all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. Hometown discounts, deferred money, split this up over X amount of years. He's in a good place because he does real well with endorsements and everything else too. So he's not hurting for cash, but he is willing to make concessions to make sure that the team is able to keep and get the kind of players that he needs to stay on top. I'm not sure if it was the Cowboys just talking about endorsements. He was, he was saying, oh, I know what he said. Mm -hmm. Why uh, we wide receivers get way more endorsements than we do, so I can't depend on the endorsement money or something. Like Who that. said that? A quarterback? No, uh, from the Cowboys, Demarcus Russell. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Sure. So he was saying unless you know, you're Von Miller in his decision making. Yeah. You know what I mean? Again, unless you're Von Miller. and we talked about this That's before true. a little bit. I don't want to get way into this, but remember, for some strange reason, in professional football, the position that you play has a lot to do with. How much you make, how much exposure you get, who gets the commercials, and all that stuff. Baseball players are baseball players. Don't matter if you're catcher, a pitcher, outfielder. Mm. You baseball player, you, get you don't wear a helmet either. That too. And it's, it's only nine. Of that, too, that too. So again, the salary structures. We're not going to pay a running back that much, but a pass rusher, twenty million is quarterback money. Twenty million is quarterback running money. He's a great pass rusher. He's getting quarterback money. I don't care how long Le'Veon kicked and screamed and he figured it out. You're not going to get that. You're not going to get it. 
when is it going to be five years from now? Running backs will be making that money, but right now, I don't think so. Number one, I don't think so either. But I'm just saying. Yeah, I, I think things, because again, you never we, know. When Saquon's rookie deal is up, and he has two more great years like that one, on top of maybe the Giants actually becoming a factor again, oh, he might break the bank. It could happen. See, the challenge is this. You have to think about it almost like what they say with the American economy. Mm -hmm. Top 1% own 80% of the wealth. Mm -hmm. Once you get out of that top 1% and you there start you looking at running back salaries, yeah. we start talking about 2 million, 3 million. We ain't talking that. We're not talking all that. And we're talking a long line of running backs, a wide number. So there's that a small true, group but that are getting guys paid. that's at the tippy top. But, he, but right now, the guys that are at the tippy top are still at 70% of a quarterback's money at best. Mm, yeah, you're probably right. Yeah, be, you, yeah, yeah, you're be. probably right. So, so again, but that's the top 10%. Right. Okay. Running backs right now, man, you need to be smart. You need to be, you need to have longevity if you right really now. make. But you like know, I said, salary over any period of time. Who knows what's going to happen in five years? If that goofball cousins can get eighty-four million over five years, or four years, or however much he did, okay, in five years, quarterback salaries could be pushing twenty-seven, twenty-eight, which means running back salaries could be pushing. Well, I read an interesting stat that kind of favors what you're saying, but I still okay. no. They're always going to lag behind. There's I'm a stat that I saw that number. said, and I forget from what year, it might have been 2014, 2016, they said the salary cap has risen 30% from that time. So they're expanding the salary cap. Absolutely. Right about that. Yes. And again, we're talking about billionaires paying millionaires. Right. You know, so you know, what they can afford is, you know, we didn't have a list that we did that time. Right. In any event, my point is that the, the, on, the on the other side of the ledger, these guys are cold-blooded business people. That's and they're going that's to how they got where they are. can mm -hmm. to keep the cost down, even as the revenues continue to rise. They might be trans, they might be getting play now internationally. And revenues are up, blah, blah, blah. But they're going to do what they can to keep those contracts, you know, and, and really low. So I, so yeah, but you when might you say right. really low, well. Again, I say manageable think about, according to think them. About, think, think about this. Right now, the most cost-effective way is to have a quarterback on a rookie contract. No doubt. On a championship-level team. <laughs> That's the perfect scenario. <laughs> if That's can, the perfect scenario. There's so many ways that they're trying to keep, that they're looking at. I mean, Wentz right now is a bargain. You know, right. Dak has been a bargain. You has know, been. And, and so, and, but it's again, can can you get that? The trick is, you got to get there before he gets off the rookie deal. That's that, or at least get Russell dog Wilson, close. Russell Wilson was a perfect example of that. So he's done. I mean, he's done now. That team has really benefited financially and everything off of him being right. an I have his turn, man. <laughs> the guy had the one article said, and we had it on our thing, uh, Russell Wilson's kind. But again, are they going to go that far? Are they are they still ready to go that far with the contracts? Or are they going to play well, around with How Russell far? But wait. I would actually. Why? Would, first of all. First of all. He gave them a deadline to do what? I think to to come at him with a deal? Yeah. A realistic so. deal. So that means him and his people already got their numbers in their heads. Okay? So they're going to wait and see what the team comes with. And then they're going to say yay or nay. We're close. We're not. You know, blah, blah, blah. The team, when I say the team, the owner, whatever, first of all, has to look at things like Kirk Cousins and Case Keenum and guys like that that really aren't on his level. The money that they're making, okay, with the teams that have them were willing to do to get them and weigh the situation. And then they have to decide, do we really want Russell Wilson to be our quarterback? 
because I'm sure he's not going to sign for less than three years. He probably wants five, which basically means he's probably going to finish his career there. At least the the, the major part. I of think his he career. would prefer that. I think he would prefer that also. But he ain't going to let him cheat him either. And I'm not saying that they would try to cheat him or play him as your thing says. <laughs> But they're going to do what you just got finished saying. They're going to try to stay as cost effective as possible with, with what is in their eyes, keeping the salary down and still be able to keep. I wonder. Him. I wonder from him if he if he was more inclined to follow the Tom Brady model or the Aaron Rodgers model. Did yeah. you have to? That has to be a mutual understanding between the players. He's already. And the team. He, he he has riches beyond money. I mean, look who he's married to. That's true. That's true. <laughs> you know. But that has to be family. something. I don't know if him and uh, his coach and his GM have the same rapport that Brady has with his coach and his GM and owner. <coughs> I would venture to guess that you need straight to the owner. some kind of he hit what kind of how, what that is an interesting question. The mm-hmm. owner of the Seahawks, yeah, is he's the Starbucks dude? I think. I don't think so. Oh, I, I, got, was, I got it mixed up was, with somebody else. I thought he was Microsoft. Was, was he? He's not the Microsoft. Ah, Paul Allen. Microsoft. Okay. He passed, right? Yes. Okay. So, so I'm not probably his family sure. is running things yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, and, and But I would assume I think that he Paul has Allen some kind of. Russell, oh, Russell, yeah. Russell, Russell. Which means his family loves him. Well, loves him. Like so, yeah, they're going to try to do everything they can to keep him there without breaking the bank. You know, I, I you know, Personally, I'm a fan of Russell Wilson as as a player. Of course, he's in the same division with my Niners. So I wish them all the death and destruction in the world and screw up the contract. Let uh, Russell Wilson when I hear a player AFC and start playing around chasing Tom Brady around something like that. When I hear players start giving out deadlines, though, (laughs) I start going, "Ooh, it it might not be." Should he have needed to give out a deadline? Should this have not been done? You named all. That's what I'm saying. Y'all supposed to be showing me love. Yeah, you know how it goes, man. This could be crazy. And how come y'all ain't coming to me? What do you mean, deadline, Russell? My whole how come y'all haven't come to me with something yet? What think are you about? For? Talk about in business, they call certain companies that come in and disrupt the industry. Yeah. How disruptive would it be to all the contract negotiations going on out there mm. if Russell Wilson showed up on the free agency market? Right now. And then my point of contention is, wait, is he unrestricted? Is he an unrestricted free agent? You have to double check. Okay. Because I, okay. All right. You got your, yeah. ask, ask your Google Siri yeah. person over there, and I'm sure they'll answer that question. But long story short, you know, see, because Russell Wilson is kind of like Saquon, that not just great as a player, but the person. You know, the face oh, he's of got the it league. all. Somebody, right. Think about team, all of a sudden, of the league. you know, I mean, we can make Russell Wilson the face of our team. Woo. Shucks. You know? The, the danger that could Let come to them if they lose Russell Wilson is the face of their team. What would the Giants give? <laughs> <laughs> look, look, he'll even know what to say. He's like, ah! Arg. I was going to say. I know you're not coming to my Niners, so. <laughs> I help Eli Pack. <laughs> I help Eli Pack. <laughs> Bro, let me help you clean that shit. You see what I'm saying? Eli, out. <laughs> you're out. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I, it's like, don't, I, you don't want to play him. I don't think you want to play that guy. You, you know, don't piss him I'm off. I'm sure that it's going to be very, um, Cordial. I, I don't. I really don't see they're, it getting, getting out of beyond hand. the cordial as we speak here. Ben, this was an interesting article, and um, we can actually take a quick look at this video. See if I can share this real quick with our peoples. Uh, they want to give us a commercial. Okay. Well. Uh, we'll we'll just let that go. They got they got their chance. We're not going to show the whole thing, but this is the question: Is it time for the NFL to eliminate the franchise tag? Mm. You know, this is a vestige of uh, another time, and I'm not sure why they did it in the first place. Even though we got to figure it's a power play to some degree. You know, we want to be able to. to keep our team. And you know something? It's funny because you know, <coughs> being a, kind of an old-fashioned guy. 
Um, in terms of in terms of this kind of stuff, I like having a team that evolves rather than turns over a lot. I don't like a lot of turnovers. I'm sure most owners would too. So, you know, I can see the franchise tag being an owner saying, look, I'm going to make sure that at the very least I can keep one guy one that guy. I know this is the guy who definitely won on our team. But, again, you're, you're not keeping them by saying I'm going to give you a five-year contract. You're keeping them by saying we're going to pay you according to this formula. You're going to get nice money, you know. Yeah, you're not, you're not getting cheated. The whole thing about the tag is the player plays his whole career to be able to be free, to choose if he wants to stay where he is, or he wants to test the waters, or maybe get picked up by a contending team if he's not already on one. He needs that. He wants that freedom. I played all these years. I'm wait. There's a point where I'm going to become it's funny free. that you say that because that, and I, in a way, I, and then when you say no, nah, you can't be free. It's like. He gonna feel some kind of way, so the money doesn't matter. I actually agree and disagree with that statement okay. about them wanting to be free. But they want to be under contract. <laughs> they want to be because that's when they get. But they paid. know they will be <laughs> under contract. The, the free if you is, get tagged, the free there's no doubt. When there's great market demand, it ain't so great when only one or two teams is even looking at you. They don't that's franchise. They, they, they don't. They don't franchise tag people. That, right. that exactly. Don't have market. Exactly. They're only the top team. Yeah. yeah. That's right. So, so those guys, those guys want to be no. The other I guys want to be, be on contract. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> sure. But they don't have to worry about getting tagged. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> you know, I'm just messing. But the franchise tag, yeah. So you think it's eliminated? I mean, I don't. I don't know. I would. I'm sure. You don't want to take. Oh God, this is so difficult because wow. I always feel like I want to be on the player's side. But I understand that if I own a team and this guy is critical to my team's success, and I know that the only way I can keep him is to tag him, that that means I'm eventually going to lose him anyway. But I have to have him at least for one or two more years until I'm able to develop through free agency in the draft so again, is to keep my team where it is to moderate before that, I have that to let him go. Demand. That's what we're talking about, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I, I think so. We know so there's demand, and so we can we can offset that. You know. Right, but and, that's, and, that's and, and the NFL has made it. Their whole point is it affects free agency, affects it does uh, 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 contract amounts, it does. things of that nature. It does, it does. But but this way, and we're not making you stay and cheating you. You're going to get paid according to the salary structure of the position that you play. And usually, not always, but usually, once they do get out from under the tag and they get picked up by another team, they make roughly that same amount of money that the tag paid them or would have paid them if they had tagged them another year. I'm thinking, if anything, they should change it to two years. You can only tag the same player twice, and then after that, he should be able to be free. I kind of like that. I always tell people, you get two strikes, this ain't baseball. Right. <laughs> right. This ain't right. baseball. Right. But, yeah. yeah that's, that's Three that's years, if you make somebody stay someplace they don't want to be, I don't care for what reason. For three years, I think that's cruel and unusual punishment. That ain't right. That Except ain't if right, you're Kirk man. Cousins, and you make eight, $60 million in those three years, and it's like, uh, whatever, pay me. You I'm keep making me talk about Kirk Cousins, man. First of all, the story. first of he's all, he's part of the story. It was in Kirk Cousins. It was in his best interest. History. It was in his best interest to keep them tagged. Well, yeah, I agree with you. That I worked out for him. I thought it was, it smart. was smart because saying, he knew that's a model. He knew that's a model. he wasn't going to make any more than what the tag was going to pay him because of the team that he was on was so bad. He was only able to show but so much. So let me hang in there, put together a nice resume as I can with this team, and then when they got to let me go, boom. And it worked. And it perfectly. worked perfectly. It worked perfectly, you know. As Bonin and Bailey said, you know, the sucker going every minute. Anywho. It could still work out for them. You know, I, I like There's it. still hope I like Kirk to mess Cousins. with Kirk Cousins because he's Kirk Cousins. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, uh, yeah, the franchise uh, tag. So, Ben, did you get a chance to see? The new schedule? No. I just came yeah. out, man. Is this the preseason schedule or the season? That's this the preseason is, this schedule. Is everything. That's the 
This is everything. This article is 65 game 2019 preseason schedule. They have everything here, though. They'll take you beyond that. Eventually, I'm sure they will. We got week three, week four. Uh, what do we got here? Okay, this is the preseason schedule. Thank you. Okay. They ain't released the schedule yet. Come on. No, this is the schedule for right I now. don't care about it's no football. stinking preseason. It's football, man. Look, look, look. Hall of Fame game. I, already, I can tell Denver you who the Eagles are going to play already. Atlanta Falcons. The Eagles are going to play the Ravens, the Jets. Who, the Eagles? I bet you the Eagles play the Ravens and the Jets. I bet you the Giants play the Jets, the Bills, and probably the Ravens. I bet you, yeah, come on. Who, the Eagles? That's without even looking. All right, you said the Eagles are going to play who? They're going to play the Ravens, the Jets, and probably, I don't even see him. Maybe the Buffalo Bills. I'm sure, I'm sure. Oh, there they go. How about the Titans? Okay. And that wasn't on your list. And I didn't mention it. It's four games. I only mentioned four. three teams. Oh, oh, okay. Who's the other three teams? Good question. Why are we talking about the Eagles? As a point of reference. Oh, I would have thought you would have took your Giants. Jaguars? You didn't okay. have them on there. I didn't have them on there. Who else? Oh, man. Some surprises for even you. Keep going. The Ravens? You I had said them the Ravens. On there? You had the Ravens on That's there? right. And the Jets. I bet money they play the Jets. Let me see. Now, this, at this point, this is week three of the preseason. Okay. Right? If the Ravens are playing, is Lamar actually going to play that game? The third game, yes. You're going to play at least the first half. Okay. All right. All right. So, again, we go back to the player strategy in the preseason in terms of your starters, how you play your starters in the right. preseason. The, mm -hmm. the template being what? First game, you get one series. Second game, you get maybe two series, a half of the first half. Okay. Or a quarter. Okay. The third game, you play the half. Fourth game, you don't play at all. Okay. So it progresses. Yep. All right. Okay. All right. All right. I'm sure the Jets were that fourth game. They, they, they try to do areas. They, they, Jacksonville was a bit away. The Giants kicked the, see, the preseason off first game against the Jets. Okay. It makes sense. Y'all get to see Levin. A Le'Veon. I could care less. Saquon. I doesn't. The they're going, they're going to hype the it to get people to watch it. it. But it's still a preseason game. You're going to see the first. They're going to have three carries each, and it's over. They're out of there. <laughs> Come on. Saquon. Not even worth it. Saquon. Le'Veon. <laughs> Won't even be worth watching. Oh, man. It's football, baby. It's foot football. We talked about this. Ben, did you see it? I saw this. I think it's so cool. Did you see this, Ben? It's so cool. I don't know if I could do that <laughs> box jump. Ben, me and you both. That joint's kind of high. You mean, look, look. You know, he wants to <laughs> play again. Um, yeah. I think, I think, yeah. I would be happy think to just be able to get back heard that to where me. I thought maybe I might be able to play again and just be happy with that. But to actually play again... I don't know, man. I don't know. But but I, I think that's fabulous for him to – Ryan um, oh, Shazier. Ryan Shazier. That's, that's incredible. Um, they thought he'd be completely paralyzed, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Yeah. You know? And uh, Serious spinal cord. We've seen injury. him – you know, come out to games and show up and at different stages in his recovery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then you look up and you see this video and you're like, wow, that is absolutely amazing. You know, that is absolutely amazing. Yeah, I think if, if we had one that was maybe about a foot high, I could probably get up on that one. <laughs> a little bit of help from the guy in the back. <laughs> get up. <laughs> a little more infinite there, buddy. <laughs> Just a little bit. Just a little bit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, you know, we always we always try to uh, look at. I, well, I'm one of those people uh, that that try to look at both sides of the ledger. Um, and so, and we've talked about a number of different things, or most of the stuff that we shared from from our website. Uh, but I do want to just kind of bring up this last piece here. Um, the NFL Foundation. I didn't know that the NFL had a foundation. So I didn't either. It's going on. You don't know exactly. I, I, 
I think I, I'm sure I've heard of the NFL Foundation, but for some reason it didn't <clears throat> click with me exactly what it was. I just thought it was like an overall NFL thing that they're doing, community stuff, blah, blah, blah. But our talk about the coalition, the Players Coalition, mm -hmm. which branched off into the NFL PA, right. kind of brought the separation to me. And I was like, ah, the owners, of course. Mm -hmm. And again, wonderful. The mission statement, they're doing good works. I think it's great. You know, so we just want, you know, uh, they have their issues. We know they have their issues, but they're on top of it enough to be out there and, and making moves uh, in the community and trying to do some some good things. So, you know, uh, there's a lot that's out there. I was actually, uh, and I'll probably have this next week uh, when we do, because they this represents all the teams. Uh, there's a lot of players now who have their own foundations. And I want to get more of a, a total list of that. Cause I, you see, you hear about activities, things that, you know, somebody's having a fundraiser or blah, 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 <clears throat> excuse me. But you don't necessarily, you know, I don't necessarily know, let's say how many players are in the NFL. You know, if it's 53 men squads, 30, <laughs> 32, 32 teams, teams like 1500, right. something like that. Right. 1500 foundations. You know what I mean? Well, everybody doesn't have one, but a lot of guys. But you do. see what I'm saying? It's a bunch of them. Yeah, if half of them had, yeah. you said over 700. Yeah. There's a lot of guys that got like little ones. Yeah, right, 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 right. Maybe right. from their old neighborhoods, their old communities where they grew up. Exactly, exactly. Supporting their high schools. Right. Some of them maybe don't have a foundation yet, but they maybe have a charity or right. they may have right. a uh, thing. We talked about the um, uh, My Cleats, My Cause. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so I'm going to be showing a little bit more of that mm -hmm. because that kind of connects to all of their little pet yeah. missions. Right. We'll call it things right. that they want to contribute to. Stuff that's important <clears throat> to them. So um, go ahead. Russell Wilson is not a free agent. <clears throat> His contract is up after the 2019 season. So what he's trying to do right now is what a lot of star players do. Renegotiate my contract now and sign me to a multi-year now before I get to free agency and really put the screws to you. So it won't be this draft that – and, and, and year of free agency that he throws everything out of balance of if he becomes a free agent. It's next year's if, if he, he becomes a free, a free agent. Yes. Which he's telling them, y'all best want to avoid that. Because once he becomes a free agent, now he can really play hardball. Like right now, suppose a, suppose a, suppose a, team, a player like Kyler Murray doesn't get picked up by the Cardinals. And everything I'm hearing Says that he'll drop. He's gonna drop. He'll if the Cardinals now, don't take him, he'll drop. Kyler Murray dropped to anywhere near what the Seahawks could get their hands on him. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> this is why we love football in the off season. <laughs> you know, <laughs> think about that. Think about that. We're gonna we're gonna uh, get ready to the before we sign off. We normally have our rants and raves and things of that nature. <laughs> Absolutely. No, oh, really. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Go. <laughs> Antonio Brown. <clears throat> Two weeks ago, I asked you nicely, please stop. You riding your old teammates. You riding Ben Roethlisberger. Hey, he might deserve it, but it's a bad look, man. You're gone. You got your wish. We're not even getting into the bad precedent that you've already set in the owner's minds about doing this LeBron thing. Oh, I ain't going there. I'm going over here. You know, football owners don't like that kind of stuff, man. And people might say, oh, I don't care. This is a good old boys network anyway. It's about time to players. All right, all right, fine, fine, fine. But you're doing too much, bro. Why are you going after Juju? Juju didn't do nothing to you. You thought Juju was your youngin, and you talk bad about Ben, and he would too. But that's like my mom telling me stuff about my wife. I'm like, Mom, I love you, but I live with her. <laughs> so wife, even if I had something bad, analogy, eh? even if I had something bad, I wouldn't say it. But I think Juju is cool. 
He's cool where he is. Junior's always the fun guy. He's the cool young dude. He got the chance to tip. He's got. He, the he's the next the big time commercial. He's the next big time star. He's fine. Why would you rip him? And then post. I forget if it was on Instagram or where it was at. Something <laughs> that Juju sent him, AB. Oh, While he was in college, respecting the world, showing you my saying, Why would you repost that? Like you look like an idiot. You took it down. He did look like yes. He idiot. got a he lot of backlash it for it. He took it down. But again, this is a dude that's pushing send without thinking because he thinks he's all that. But before he got to send, he had to t- he had to, to actually set that text up. That's right. That where, what's disconnecting in his head that makes you got time to be operating at that petty level. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got Go back to Disneyland with your quarterback. You Cut this I'm mess saying? out, man. Yeah, that's an, it's People lose some respect it's for it. It's petty and and you know, I'm not about that. Anyway, I have a very petty rant. Oh, it's a petty rant? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shame on you, but let's hear it. <laughs> no, 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 no. My, I'm back to again, I play my best Madden. Oh, geez. Here we go. Like a year and a half after the game came out. <laughs> right? <laughs> when they were on the next game in their half season. That's when you really got it cooking. Smoking on that whole game. <laughs> oh, so, Lord. So, you know, I'm playing Madden. It's the off season again. You got to get your football fix in. Right. And I'm executing at a high level. Okay. And again, I go to do the replays, right? They actually give ranking points to the replays. Like when you go back, you can replay your, your, you know, your play. They rank the replays? Yeah. So like According to how good the play was? Yeah. Okay. If there's an actual number there. Okay. But they only give a limited amount of actual replays out of all the plays that. And it's judged by the game. Right. So if you're trying to, like, replay stuff for your own strategic purposes, it may not be there. Not after the game is over. You literally have to. Dang. Like you go, if, you if go I back during the play, game. Yeah, I have to go right to it. I got you. Because what I'm doing now, and you're going to see this later on, ladies and gentlemen, is I'm going to bring the Madden thing a little further into this. Okay. Uh, as I now begin to learn how to edit. Madden videos. There you go. On the PlayStation. There you go. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. Don't let them hold you back. Some strings. Don't let them hold strings. you back, bro. In any event, um, <laughs> I have these plays, and the play <coughs> has the number. Let's say the play is ranked eleven hundred, right? Okay. There's no replay. Four plays up. Guy runs three yards for a touchdown. It's rated seventy. It's got a replay. I'm like, how? How? How does that happen? How is their programming not just that? That be so automatic, you know what I mean? You they put the numbers. Doesn't make sense to me, but I don't play. And it's not so. I literally do have to like because now I figured out how to record the play. I have to go back if I want that play because I know I can't depend on the game to have that replay available. You know, and it's only because I. Had some other software. Um, at least, at least you know what to do. You have an alternative. It's that important to you that you figured it out. But if you if you forget, or if you're really into oh, the game, then, then it sucks, and you would lost that play. You know, I had another one of those guys quit on me too. I yeah. hate quitters. Oh man, it's crazy. It's I hate crazy. Quitters. It's crazy. And you know what always cracks me up about them? They're pretty good players. They can't handle losing though. But Especially I mean, if they win a lot in the beginning of the game. They be giving me some business. Yeah. And I'll be like, oh, man, I'm getting all hyped up. You know, I'm yeah. like, oh, okay, it's like that. Okay, okay. Yeah. You know, then we coming back and like they get a little something there and they get a little something there. And I'm like, I like this. This is what it's all about, you know. And, but then, you know, I, I decipher everything about them and all of a sudden it's bam, bam. And they're like, we're they out. They just I'm like, leave. wait a second. Yeah. I'm just putting a hammer down on you. Come on now. Couple more times. They, they pull a Magic Johnson. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. I love Magic Johnson. Yeah. Great, successful guy. Mm. But when the times get tough, Magic gets going. Well, you know, the thing about it, 
whether he his reason for leaving or, or whatever, I think his reason for leaving is actually legit. I'll tell you why in a minute. The challenge is that's the, the kind way, of guy he the is. fact that he made the announcement before he talked to the owner. Yeah, that's uh that you know that wasn't and cool. He, he they're even, supposed to be such he great even friends. Said, you know, I'm he basically said, you know, couldn't handle it. You know, I can't. And he I mean, probably just, needed to get it some, out. There's a and way he was I want to say it, but I was getting so much trouble if I said it that way. Yeah. My point being, he was afraid if that, he talked to her first, he wouldn't do it. He, well, you might be right. You might or she be might right. try to talk she him out of it. He, he couldn't stand up to the pressure and say right. no. Right. So he's like, I'm gonna do it first. But one of the things I saw in media, and I thought it was pretty legitimate, was that. There's a level of work required in that job title. Absolutely. <laughs> that he was not willing. He didn't. He had underestimated. You know what I mean? That's right. He thought that when he walked in, there would be magic sparkles and everything would get done. That's right. And he just had to kind of be there. All he had to do was pick up the phone. Things. So look, man, you know, i like you to come. This is magic. But oh, they were magic. talking about how much road work is necessary to be out there finding the the talent and evaluating everything, plus running the actual operations of the franchise. On top of that. On top of that. That's actual work. That's actually get up That's in the morning work. and start run, you know. Earn like, that money earn that. work. And this guy's, you know, he ain't trying to do all that. He owns a lot of businesses. Yes, he does. He don't work like that in any of them. No, he doesn't. So I think he thought he could apply that to the Lakers. Yeah, and he was and he mistaken. really did yeah, he was mistaken and and now, you know, you look at that team, you you got to you got to have a master plan. Yeah. You got you got to have a couple things cuz you only got how many more years with LeBron. While he was making that announcement, there were presidents, guys that hold the exact same title and have the exact same job responsibilities that he has over in Slovenia <laughs> and the Czech Republic <laughs> sitting in some dark gym looking at looking for the next Dirk Nowitzki okay when he's over here crying I can't do it no more <laughs> these cats is out yeah when, when you know what I'm they, saying? They, they were saying he's got that's the job of miles that's the they job do a lot of travel that's right. they're that's all right. over the place they're that's scouting right. out there you know so so yeah, there's a lot of leg work in that, and right. he wasn't. You know. And they're not just scouts, though. You can't equate these guys to to like these famous scouts, I guess, or like baseball scouts. Right. They go to the nether reaches as soon as they hear an inkling that there's a player in in the Dominican Republic. They'll go to the shabbiest little town. These guys are playing with rolled up socks for balls and and stuff. You know what I mean? To before, find the next guy. Before we close out. Just because we happen to be talking about basketball, this is a football show. It is a football show, but I knew he was going to say something about basketball people, before it was over. It's a people show, and so sometimes you might, you know, because of the people. I can't wait. Come on, give it to me. NCAA. Oh, I thought you had something good, man. Did you you it was you cool. It? Did yeah, I did. I did. I watched did you watch it. the women's and the men's? I watched the women's uh, Final Four, yes. I was disappointed that UConn lost. Because this is probably, you can't use the word worst UConn team, but this is probably the less talented of the last 10 UConn teams. I was kind of rooting for them. Oh, underdog thing. Yeah, and then Notre Dame beat them. And Which I was is, like, they're an ironic underdog. But go ahead. Yeah, well, they're their history. They, well, they're yes, history. because of their history. But right now, they pretty much got like a regular, really yeah. good squad. Okay. They're kind of like, they kind of went out like Duke. Like, no, I can't say that. Duke was expected to win. But Notre Dame and Baylor. Baylor's been the best team all season anyway. But I thought Notre Dame would get them because of, and I can't see the girl's name, oh, yeah, that yeah. won it with the buzzer last yeah, year. Yeah, yeah. But it's irony, irony, irony. Oh, irony. did you see, irony. The, you see the end of the game? She missed the foul shot. Yeah. So she won the year before with like a buzzer beater, and then she lost it on yeah, the line. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Answer me this. And maybe it was just me. So you're in that situation, yes. right? You got to have, what, three to win, right? Well, three yeah. will win it. Three, three will win it, two a tie. Two a tie. You missed the first shot. Right. So your tie option is gone. No, your win option is gone. No. Well, no. 
Your tie option, two to tie, three to win, right? It's not gone, but go ahead. Your tie, at, at this point, there's no time to do anything but take these shots, okay? That's how it was like one second left, right? Okay. So you – second shot, you don't make that shot. She tried to miss on purpose and it went. No, I don't think she really she tried. Did. If you look at she how flat the shot is – she dude. actually tried to front rim it. She did, dude. man. I'm telling you. Dude. She tried to front rim it, and it went in. Dude, look, look, let me tell you something. The worst basketball player in the world know how to throw, throw the ball off the backboard or something. The, no, because then, was, then you have to run into coverage. You're telling she got it. She went, yeah, I know. Which, gives the, which, which but makes the shot you make take the that shot. much harder. The one thing you can't do there. The one thing that kills it all dude, completely. She didn't I don't care how badly you shot. do it. You don't make the shot. She didn't mean to do it. It was an accident. I've seen you that happen before. You can't let I've that seen happen. That. It in happened in the men's joint in an earlier game. You can't let that happen. You can't let that happen. No, you got to throw something up there that you, you let know that is not going in. And maybe everybody in the in the whole building knows <laughs> that it's not going in. But when that ball comes off the rim, you think it's they don't 50, practice 50. That? You think they don't practice that? They, they practice every situation they're possible. They need to could practice make. this some more because <laughs> you can't make that shot. If she could precisely in practice front rim that and somebody get the layup and lay it in and take the game overtime, and she does it eight out of ten times, and the other two times it goes off the side of the rim or accidentally goes in, and then she tries it in the game and it goes in, what are you going to do, man? Move on to the men. What do you think about the men? You slam it off the backboard. It flies back here. You got to run, get it. Somebody dies. You, got, for, you, got you can't shoot, shoot from right back there. there. Yeah, yes, you can. You can't shoot it from back you don't there. Just shoot it from you, threes. All right, I'm not going to argue with you about you this, shoot man. Threes. What you're saying you makes can't absolutely let, no sense whatsoever. You can't make that shot. Makes That's absolutely no sense but whatsoever. You make what that you're shot. Saying. It's a the men's thing was cool because you had two defensive teams, but one lived by the three. Usually you live by three, you die by three. That's what happened to them, period. Mm. That's it. To three, eh? Yep. Wow. You live by three, you die by three, period. There was a point in, that, uh, point in that game where the defense was stifling. I mean, nobody could by get both teams, anything. absolutely. Wow. And, that's, and that's, that's why they were saying it was going to be a boring game. But I knew it wouldn't. I knew it would be a good game. And mm. I like defense. Right, right. Being right. football we fans, like we like defense. And we yeah. can appreciate defense. Yeah. Yeah. And both teams were known for their defense. Unfortunately... If it would have been a better game if Texas Tech was hitting, but they did what they had to do. It was it was a good game. Yeah, yeah. It was a good game. Yeah, both teams, both games, both games. All right. Ben and Barry on football. Um, we did want to share real quick uh, with you that we do have a page, a couple pages, beside, they're going to find it, beside our Facebook page. We do have a Twitter page. Let's close this. And uh, we gave this guy some nice love, but that's not really what I wanted to show. Is this it right here? Bam! Ben and Barry on football on Twitter. Come join us. If you go to our website, www.benandbarryonfootball.com, you will end up here at the YouTube station where all the videos emanate from and go out from there. Uh, we have recently recently opened up a gram account that's what the young people call it then whatever hey what am i doing on there you're the only post we have cool remember this <laughs> i think i did <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That was yeah. kind of crazy. I'm looking over my shoulder. Like, <laughs> yeah, what making you? somebody around. <laughs> I'm not sure I want anybody to hear this, but uh, <laughs> that's funny. Absolutely, absolutely. So we do have an Instagram account now, BNBOF, Ben and Barry on football. We actually have 23 followers. Cool. And that's all we got <laughs> to show for it at that's this all right. particular point. But, you know, I have an Instagram account, but I don't really follow person more personal, but I don't really follow a lot of people. Right. Um, but we following a lot more people, and I'm just surprised at how active 
like so many of the names across, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. MJ Acosta and the NFL mm-hmm. channel, all of them. And the ladies have a little cabal thing going on because MJ Acosta posts something mm-hmm. and all the other little, all the other, I shouldn't say little, all the other lady announcers and reporters. Oh, they all kind of jump They in. all like it. You start course, seeing names. Of course, you know, as they should. Which they should, yeah. Right. But I'm like, oh, yeah, she like this, she like this, she like this. So, yeah, it, it's an interesting thing. And, you mm-hmm. know, I'm, we talked about at one point, um, one of my potential things that I was looking at is just, you know, seeing the women of color actually mm-hmm. getting a chance to host shows. Yes. You know, and, and I have to give Good Morning Football yes. a little bit of credit because they allowed some of those ladies to come in. Tiffany mm-hmm. Blackman yep. hosted the show. Yep. Did a good job. Um, did a good job. MJ Costa hosted the show. Mm-hmm. Did a good job, you know. And so it was nice to see a different face up there in the yep. morning, but good energy from all of them. Good mm-hmm. energy from all of them. Right. I mean, Kay runs the show. We know that. <laughs> when she's there. Oh, yeah, it's her show. She's sure. her show. But um, it, it's nice. So yeah, and a lot of the times, and you know, I thought about maybe at some point, maybe I could replace you with somebody and put another person in the show, you know, when you're not here. No, I'm just messing with you. <laughs> <laughs> b on football, Barry Sterling Mitchell signing <laughs> off. Go Knowles. I forgot to look both ways.